Hello and welcome to this first Let's Play in Thrones of Britannia. My name is Maddis, and today we're going to be playing through as Mead, one of the Gaelic Kingdoms. Mead lies in the heart of Ireland, with its current leader Flan aspiring to become the High King. I'm going to be going for the Short Kingdom Victory Condition, which is to rule over five vassals and control my home province of Mead. This accurately gives you the objectives which reflect the goals of Mead at the time and will, of course, change for each faction. This changes how I can choose to play the game. Rather than conquering everywhere or allying with a lot of other factions, I can befriend other factions and bring them into the fold, making me the High King, or attack others and subjugate them, forcing them under my rule, and rebuild their domain. This should also allow me to go tall rather than wide throughout the campaign. Your father, as our king, dreamed of a united Ireland, but his vision was never realized. Now your brethren in the north hold the high kingship, and you must wait your turn. But the arrival of the Viking foreigners brings opportunity. Their strength could be yoked to your goals. With them by your side, you can fulfill your father's dream whilst claiming the high kingship for your line. One throne will rule Ireland. It is your destiny to be king. As soon as we enter the campaign, we are issued a mission to defeat the rebel army within our lands. But before we get stuck into that, let's first take a look at the campaign map. Mead starts surrounded by other factions, without access to a port, and no natural defences to aid them, so enemies could come from any direction. We start with two armies, one led by our King Flan, which is well rounded with six units, and one in our main settlement with two. This will be beneficial in case of any issues in the south of our lands. For now we have a very real and present threat in the rebel army, so I'm going to move Flan into Canassus, which will give us access to the recruitment pool. As we can see, we have a variety of units to choose from, with weapon types you'd expect from the time. I'm going to get some Arig Warband, elite swords, some Freeman Axemen, a levy axe unit, Arig Horsemen, an elite melee cavalry, and some Horse Boys, some missile skirmisher cavalry. The roster fielded by Meade favours strong missile units in their javelinmen, and exceptional late game axe units with gallow glasses. For now, however, this will see us through the coming battles. As you can see at the top there, there is a breakdown of the cost of recruiting these units. The upfront cost paid now, the upkeep cost per turn, and the food cost. You will still be able to recruit more units even if you don't have the food for them, but this will have an impact on your other army's replenishment and potentially cause attrition. In my province we have one settlement, Clan McNoise, and three villages surrounding it. At this point we should focus on getting more food, so improving our farms would certainly give us that boost. With that done let's go ahead and end the turn, and we'll see what happens with this rebel army. It seems they are being confident and have attacked the village with my army inside. We should be able to make short work of them and end this rebellion swiftly. Welcome to the battlefield. In Thrones of Britannia, because of the detail on the campaign map, we're able to reflect that in the battle maps. Canassus has a farm and a priory, which can be seen on the map. Now, back to the battle. I'm going to move my men and take the high ground. Using some of my cheaper units in the shield castle formation at the bottom of the hill will prevent a head-on attack, and will keep the enemy within range of my javelinmen for devastating attacks. But first I'm going to skirmish with my horse boys and try and get a few quick kills on their general's unit. It seems their general wants these boys dead. Understandable. But he's come within range of my javelinmen, and I don't think he'll be able to do much when he himself is dead. The infantry have also come up against my swords, and beat a hasty retreat. All in all, a solid victory for us. We managed to destroy the enemy army, and Flan has now leveled up, allowing us to add a follower to his retinue, which will grant him bonuses. I think in this case, as we're trying to grow the army as quickly as possible, the Forager will be great for us, with his plus 5 replenishment, and the plus 2 food is a nice bonus. We should also take this opportunity to look at our infrastructure and recruit more units in the south, And with that, let's end the turn. Throughout Thrones of Britannia, 
With all the factions, you'll be given these narrative opportunities, which steer the course of your campaign. These will also appear to the AI, making each playthrough different. We've been given a choice to make. It seems the Vikings in Dublin have been raising an army, presumably to attack Briga. Now, we could at this point attack Briga and take their lands before the Vikings. Or we could attack the Vikings and take their lands instead. Or we could just not get involved. But that's not my way. To be the High King of Ireland, I need to prove I'm worthy of it. And to do that, I need to protect those who need it. So I'm going to attack Dublin. As I have my army within range, I'm going to straight away seize the village of Loch Gabhair, which is a mining village, so Dublin will lose some vital income. This has given me some legitimacy, which is a Gaelic culture point system. As we can see at the top bar, I have one of a hundred legitimacy. This grants bonuses in battle and on campaign, and when enough has been gathered, it allows me to annex another Irish faction. It can be gathered through conquest, like we see here, and events. This mechanic is different for each culture and faction, and has different impacts throughout. Dublin have marched out of their settlement and attacked my neighbour, so this leaves me with a choice. I could attack the army, or I could try and take Dublin, or I could seize the village of Nascaree. I'm going to do the latter. Taking the farm, along with the mine, will seriously impact Dublin's ability to field a large army. Next stop, the Siege of Dublin. Dublin has been under siege for a few turns now. Their army is preoccupied with other factions and has failed to come to their aid. Winter has come, and will cause me great attrition if I do not take Dublin this turn. So it's time to attack and drive them out. My plan is ruthless and bloody. Simply overwhelm the enemy by getting my towers to the walls and destroying their gate and killing all inside. That certainly was a bloodbath, a complete annihilation of the Dublin Vikings. This has not rid us of all the Vikings in Ireland though. Dublin has instead forced all of the other Viking factions in Ireland to become their vassals, meaning we now have a lot more factions to deal with. With wars in the south and tensions growing between the other Irish factions, the next few years are going to keep us on our toes. Everything you see here is currently under development, so is subject to change. Thrones of Britannia comes out on April 19th, and you can pre-order your copy now and receive 10% off from selected retailers.